In this video, the second of our two-part tutorial on creating raised flower beds, we explain how to use Forest Pack to add all the plants. If you've yet to watch the first part, it explained how to model wooden raised beds using RailClone. But we've split this tutorial into two because even if you don't want to create raised beds, some of the tips in this second video should be useful for any kind of decorative planting. In this tutorial, we'll be using the Bushes and Flowers collection from the 3D Garden, which contains 41 species of common, small decorative garden plant, each in four variations for a total of over 180 plants. Plus there are additional presets and grasses. But of course, these techniques will also work with any other assets. So get started by adding a new forest pack object, selecting a spline from the scene. If you're combining this tutorial with the previous one for raised beds, make sure you choose the same spline that's being used to drive the rail clone objects. Then go to the geometry rollout and either add plants from the scene or go to the library browser. To select multiple items from the library, just hold down control as you click. Choose a selection of plants that go well together in your beds and then when you're done, just click on Import Selected. Just do a preliminary edit of distribution density to approximate the final planting. We'll come back to this later. So in a second, we're going to use Forest Pack's auto clustering feature to create groups of plants parametrically. To determine which plants belong in a group, the feature uses the color ID set in the geometry panel. In some cases, we may have two plants of the same species that should be clustered together. Or maybe you just want a patch of plants that contains multiple species. Either way, you group them by assigning them the same colour ID. So go through the list and assign the colour IDs as appropriate. Now it's not necessarily easy to see what's going on in the viewports, so to see the colour IDs represented on the points cloud, go to the display rollout and enable use colour ID. Now, go to the distribution diversity settings and turn on cluster. This feature creates noise maps internally that automatically create clusters from items with the same color ID. There are four settings. Size, which unsurprisingly is used to control the size of the clusters in scene units. Roughness, which sets the shape of the clusters from smooth at 0% to rough at 100%. Blurry Edge, which allows adjacent clusters to bleed together from sharply defined borders at 0% to blurred borders at 100%. And finally Noise, which adds random items to the distribution. In this example, you have some choices to make. If you use a small value, you'll get small clusters of plants, which looks nice, but all the beds will end up looking more or less the same. If you use, if you use a larger size, each bed will contain fewer species of plants but the beds can end up looking visually quite different because of this. As always, the exact setting depends on the look you're going for. Don't forget too that the clusters feature respects the item's probability value, so you can easily adjust the mix of plants by increasing or reducing the probability values which are found in the geometry rollout. What about this situation where we have several plants that are quite different sizes? In this scene, for example, I have many small flowers, but also some bushes that are much larger. When we decrease the density to a point that the small flowers are correctly spaced, the bushes are really overlapping far, far too much. So to fix that, you can use collisions. Just a note, sometimes it's easier to see and resolve this issue by changing the viewport representation to pyramid proxies from the display rollout. Okay, so first of all, with collisions disabled, adjust the density, threshold and distribution map to get the, the correct spacing for your smallest plants. Once you've got your spacing for the smallest plants, then enable collisions and turn on preview and viewport so that you can see the results of the changes. So all of your carefully placed small plants will then sort of disappear or thin out. So we want to disable collisions for those. Do this by going to the geometry rollout. At this point select everything and set the collision radius value to 0%. Effectively you've enabled and then disabled collisions again. But the difference here is that you can now increase the collision radius for just those large plants that really need it. In this way you can mix large and small plants and maintain a nice and appropriate density throughout. Once you're happy with the distribution, don't forget to add some randomization from the transform rollout. 
So for this scene, I set the scale randomization minimum to 30% and maximum to 140% to create a much larger range. I also changed X and Y rotation to minus 15 to 15%. In the areas rollout for edge mode, I'd probably choose either point or if that results in plants intersecting the wooden edgings, uh, choose size or edge. And that more or less finishes the beds. And so far, everything we've discussed has been relevant whether you're planting normal beds or raised beds. In the final part though, we'll look at two techniques for moving the plants into position on the Z axis to sit on the flower beds we created in Rail Clone. We'll use either the item Z offset parameter to simply move them up into position, or a more sophisticated version where we link the Z position to a Rail Clone parameter using forest effects. So first of all, to raise all the plants manually, simply select them from the geometry rollout and increase the Z offset property. And it's done. This is by far the easiest way to get the desired look, and you could leave it there. But it's not a fully integrated system. If I want to change the height of the bed, I have to edit the rail clone object and the forest pack object separately. Uh, so let's see how we can fix that with an expression. So for now, set the Z offset back to zero. Then go to the effects rollout and click to add a new effect. Open the effects editor. So the first thing you want to do when creating an effect is to decide, to decide what property of the scatter you're aiming to control. In this case, it's the Z position of the plants. And if you look at the list of attributes on the left hand side, you should find one called FP item dot position. Double click on it to add it to the expression. There's no need to type. In the description pane at the bottom of the editor, some information is displayed about this property. For example, here we can see that this is a vector. That means it has three values, an X, a Y, and a Z. To access them, you append a dot X, dot Y, or dot Z to the end of the FP item dot position. Since we want to control the Z position, our expression will start with FP item dot position dot Z, and then an equals sign. So we want to be able to edit the Z position outside of the expression. And for that, we need a parameter. Several types are available, including numeric, scene objects, controller, texture, or curve. Let's start with a simple one. Add a new numeric parameter and call it height adjust. Change the type to scene units. Now to update the expression so that it references this parameter, add its name after the equals sign so that it now reads fpitem.position.z equals height adjust. And then add a semicolon to finish the line and click evaluate. You can now change the Z position for all the plants using one simple parameter in the effects rollout. We can go further though. We're still having to enter this value manually. Instead, we'd like to link the Z position directly to rail clone. We'll still leave this here as an additional adjustment for now. Okay, so to link it to rail clone, you're going to use a controller, which allows you to wire a variable in forest pack directly to a value actually in any other object. So click to add a controller and call it bed height. Update the expression to use the new parameter so that it now reads FP item dot position dot Z equals bed height plus height adjust. Again, okay, note that I've kept the height adjust just in case I want to tweak the position after it's been offset. It, it's not strictly necessary. If you now evaluate, go to the effects panel and select bed height. You'll see a button called pick controller. Click on this and in the subsequent window, find the rail clone object. So go to object rail clone and look for the exported height parameter for the beds in the rail clone. And there's bad news, it's not there. And that's because parameters in rail clone aren't visible to wiring by default. But fortunately there's an easy workaround. So just go and select the rail clone object. Turn on auto key animation and just update the value of the parameter you want to use for wiring. It doesn't matter what this value is, we're going to delete it afterwards anyway. Turn off auto key, then delete all the keyframes. By animating those properties, we've added exposed controllers that can be used for wiring, even though we've subsequently deleted the keyframes. And you can now go back to forest pack, select pick controller again, and then find the controller that defines the height of the raised bed. Click OK, and these two objects are now wired together. If you reselect the rail clone object and change the rail clone object's bed height parameter, 
you'll see the forest object is also updated, ensuring the two items work together as one system. And you now have a fully procedural bed system. The splines define the footprint for both the geometry of the raised bed created with rail clone, as well as the plants added with forest pack. By selecting the rail clone object, you can adjust the height of the bed, which in turn adjusts the Z position of all the plants. I'm sure you can see that this approach has many other uses beyond this example. And we hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you do have any questions, please contact us on the forum and stay tuned for more tutorials coming very soon.